Buckskin Gulch is located near the Arizona-Utah border and is the longest and deepest slot canyon in the southwestern United States. We hiked from the Wire Pass Trailhead to Lee's Ferry, which is 44.2 miles in length. The first leg of the hike is a rocky and sandy 13.2 miles from the Wire Pass Trailhead to the confluence of Buckskin Gulch and the Perea River. This can make for a long first day since there's no camping allowed within Buckskin Gulch, but this is honestly one of the most beautiful hikes I've ever been on. It was actually one of the first slot canyons I had ever visited, and a huge thanks to my roommate Jeff for inviting me along on this hike with him. I shot a lot of footage on this hike, and I've decided to divide this video up into three parts. I've also decided to go with no music on this series, but I might pop in with some voiceover audio here and there just to break up the silence and give you a little more information. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this series, and thanks for watching. So at this point in the hike, we had already done maybe just under a couple miles, but this is the official start right here to Buckskin Gulch. And it really doesn't take long until you realize that you're inside of a slot canyon. It can get pretty chilly here, so you do want to bring some extra clothes. And also your clothes could get really wet. As you'll see later, we do wade through some water on this hike. But you don't need any climbing equipment. You can see we're using a ladder right here. And also the canyon is quite narrow, especially at the beginning. But it does also kind of open up again, so it's not like you're walking through a really narrow corridor for miles on end. So yeah, it's a very variable hike. And you can also see up here, there's a log, and that log got there from water. So definitely check the weather, and that means more than just looking at the sky and seeing that there's no clouds in the sky. You have to like plan ahead and look and make sure that it's not raining anywhere in the vicinity. People have died in slot canyons like this due to flash floods, so please just do your research and all that stuff. Also want to add that you are going to need a permit to go on this hike, whether you're doing it as a day hike or as a multiple day hike like we did. I'll put links below on where you can get all the permits and all that information, but just make sure you're going through the proper channels and stay safe. Dude, that's pretty cool. Yeah. At this point in the hike, there's some petroglyphs you can look at. I couldn't really find much information online about these, but I know that there's a lot of petroglyphs and pictographs throughout southern Utah. From what I understand, petroglyphs are carved into the rock like these are, and pictographs are painted onto the rock. So I think that's kind of the two differences of ancient rock art sites like these. But yeah, you can see right here, there's a big horned sheep and another person looking things, all kinds of things. I don't really know much about these though. So if anybody out there is informed about these specific petroglyphs in Buckskin Canyon, definitely feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll pin it up to the top. So these reminded me of the ones that I saw down in Australia in Kakadu National Park. So I'll put a link to that if you want to check that out as well.
Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, That's so cool. So yeah, the first day is a little over 13 miles, like I mentioned before, but you're going to want to start as early as you can because you're going to be stopping to take so many pictures. I mean, this place is a photographer's paradise. And doing it at different times of the day where the sun is hitting the rocks differently, you could probably do this hike multiple times and it would look very different each time depending on what time of the year you go, what time of the day you start. So it's definitely one of those hikes where you could do this one multiple times. It's it's a really beautiful place. And you can see that it's kind of a sandy hike, which I think is kind of difficult to hike fast through. Um, hard to get a lot of footing, but yeah, you can imagine lots of water deep through here. So you definitely want to make sure you're going through at the right time of year. Um, and here I'm pointing to a pile of sticks that's up high in the slot canyon. It's kind of hard to see in this shot, but there's a lot of logs and things that are jammed up. It's kind of creepy going underneath it. Yeah, man, I feel like I'm going to die any minute. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. At this point in the hike, we came across what we think is a baby bighorn sheep. Not 100% sure on that. Could be a goat. Pretty good, well-preserved skeleton right here. Does it not go? I was oh, curious before I went. It might. Where those trees are, maybe?
I was amazed at just how tall the canyon walls were on this hike and unfortunately I couldn't find any official numbers online as to exactly how tall they are but according to one website I found it says they are over 500 feet high in some places and really that number doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah, this is Jeff Arch. So we'll name it. <laughs> ah, the sun. There are a few spots where the sun shines through to the canyon floor, which is really nice after walking in the shade all day. That's all. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it looks so pretty in the sun. Alright, well I feel like that's a great spot to end this first episode, so thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.